I'll have me able to see Helen all day at least. So we're just saying hi to them, so sorry for the extended break, but like I say, we're not the ones holding up the game. That's very so much so just the players deciding to take a break before the finals. Top left hand side of the ESL Open Cup Europe number 108 finals. Now Red Terran player from Team Liquid, his map pick up first it would seem on Berlingrad. It's Team Liquid's Clam. Bottom right corner of the map, our Blue Zerg player from Clash is Raynor. As we dive into map one of this best of five. Hoping to see some top tier TVZ between these two, as we so often do get between the two of them. Raynor and Clam is always a little bit of a treat to watch, of course. And do let me know who you're cheering on in the chat. Would love to hear who you guys have uh, kind of on your kind of uh, radar, who you guys think is going to take it down a day. So would love to hear about that. And of course, if you do watch this finals on YouTube, do consider subscribing to the channel and maybe even liking the video. It allows us to, well, have our videos seen by more people, which means we get to spread more StarCraft to people, which is just fantastic, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, that's just fantastic news, and that's just something we should keep on doing, keep on going for, so... Yeah. Do check that out as we, uh... Get this underway, and we kick this off. Look and see what happens in this first map of the best five. Just, uh, yeah, pretty uh, slow going start. SCV across the map is going to take down these minerals, so shortens the overall rush distance here from one player to the other. So shortening that a little bit. Now as the SCV comes all the way across, is going to see the hatchery on the natural and just know that this is a hatchery first and not a pool first, and that's pretty much all you're looking for here. If you can confirm that this is a uh, hatchery first, then you're in a pretty good position to, position to just say, okay, hatchery first. I don't need to keep my Reaper at home. My Reaper can come and scout. You're not going to have a super fast road, Troran. It just takes away a lot of the options super early in the game, and that's all you're really looking for here is confirmation. And uh, then, of course, you can go from there as the Reaper comes through. A little bit of damage being done. Extractor is going to cancel. Just going to see the Reaper coming back down the bottom side. Continue to do a little bit extra here. As you have the Queen. Put a little bit more damage out on the Reaper. Back and forth continues at the moment. And you know, seeing our drones, our link speed. All of this continuing up at the moment. So a lot of this coming through. With a uh, pretty just standard get-go. That wasn't a sentence, was it? A pretty standard get-go. <laughs> oh, I wish I didn't say stupid shit when I cast. I wish I could just sound smart all the time. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. You know, it's my brain isn't used to casting at 10.30 at night anymore. It's like, you know, we do so many daytime streams nowadays. Casting at night, it's like, whoa. I'm in bed by now sometimes, you know? It's like, jeez. Can't do all these fancy sentences, but, you know, seven words in a row that make sense. <laughs> Ripper's obviously being pretty active. It's going to be joined by the first Hellions here shortly, so it will be safe against any speedy Zerglings. And that's why I can stay on the map again. If this was a larger map, maybe the Reaper would have had to pull back a little bit just to ensure it was safe and able to meet up with those Hellions. But in this case, it was absolutely fine. We do just get up to a third hatchery on that bottom side. Two more Hellions coming across. I'm just going to play the Cloak Banshees to start the series off. So Cloak Banshees on the way. It's going to allow you to chip through a few of the drones. So by working through a few of the drones and just obviously keeping yourself safe against potential Roach attacks, you know, you're looking to try and take a, a bit of a lead into the mid game and use that to kind of, you know, build into a bit of bio momentum and really get your Marines up in the face of the Zerg, getting rid of all that creep spread, and maybe starting to trade very efficiently into that mid game as well. So that's the initial setup. Stim is obviously never going to be far behind in this scenario, and it's already starting up here. So Stim is indeed on the way. The Queens are there to push the Reaper and the Hellions back. The Hellions now coming back around the right side. The creep spread. It's going to be uh, finishing up there and still pushing forward. On the left, the Hellions and a Reaper are going to come around as well. And they're going to make their way across over here. And start to poke in towards the third base, which is not going to be all too successful right away. It's going to be having our Hellions and the Reaper... It's just holding as much map control as possible. Might even scan here for this creep spread if he really wants to try and slow 
rain or down at all, right? This creep is the sort of creep that actually really would kind of make the map a little bit kind of friendlier for you just in general, so... Yeah, uh, meanwhile, Banshees are, of course, showing up for the first time. We'll see if they can get any damage done. Raynor does know about them. The Overlords have seen them multiple times at this point, as they will cloak up, and, well, I mean, no surprises as to which way they're coming from. Now they cloak up, and, I mean, spawn on the bottom, spawn on the top, completely zoned out. As they aim for the main base, I imagine they're not going to find much more of an opening, despite the fact there's no lair, there's no overseers, the spores are just very well placed. You know the Banshees are coming from the left, why, he's even got double spawn on the main. I always want to say that Raynor is just over-defending, right? And we do find an opening here for three drones on the uh, third base mineral line. And playing around the right side, now into the natural, maybe this is where you find an opening. And he's got six spores. That's an insane investment, and he loses nine drones anyway. This is really bad for Raynor, because that's a lot more spores than usual. If he only made three spores, he would have been three drones up, and he'd still be up 13 workers or so. Three drones doesn't sound like a lot, but it's not just the three drones. It's also all of the money that those extra spores cost. And to then still take eco damage? So these 10 drones killed is more like 13 drones and maybe even you could argue for like 2 two or 3 more on top of that due to the cost of the spores. You could almost see this as like 15 drones of damage and the Banshee's out alive. If you over defend like that you're not meant to be taking any damage at all as we clean up all the creep in front of that 4th base. The Queens rush over to replace some of it. Did we lose one of the Banshees? We did. That's a real shame of course because that takes away the potential to come back in and be as annoying with them later. Reno is going to have a decent drone count still. He's obviously been focusing on that, but I'm very afraid of this 1-1 combat shield attack. A lot of marines, first tanks on the way. I actually don't know if Reno holds this. Clem's got a good army supply lead. His upgrades are really far ahead. His Hellions are still alive, so they're going to be Hellbats to tank. Uh, there's no Balin speed even started. I think Reno is in a horrible spot right now, guys. I don't know if he holds this. The first day Balins are just not ready yet. They are coming in on the high ground. Clem wants to not get too far ahead of himself, not get overconfident. He is going to start splitting against these Banes once the Hellbats to soak that damage. That means it's going to be Marines versus Lings in the mineral line. Choked up. Yeah, there's no way that these Lings are going to win this fight. Not against 1-1 Marines when they are 0-0. Clem will sit here and trade. He knows the power of his units. Target fires down the couple of Banelings. Absolutely no chance from Raynor. And again, it's just the little things. You cannot invest into that much defense and still take that much damage. And that is where Clem is going to come on through. These Lings will continue to die. And yes, the game doesn't end here, but Clem has got his reinforcements already moving through the middle of the map. As scan in the middle of the map onto that creep might not be too far amiss and would probably be pretty nice, but it seems like he just wants to pull it around the right side and then focus up on the next round of the attack. Can these Banelings make a difference? Without Baneling speed, I really do not think so. Clem is obviously going to start working off a of creep here soon and pulling back off a of creep. Multiple tanks against Siege. The good news is the uh, Marines aren't near the Lings to help out. He pulled back. There's a couple of Banelings still coming forward, and this was still on creep. This was the time to go for Raynor. Despite still being down on upgrades, it allowed him to jump the tanks while keeping the Banelings fairly far forward on creep and in the fight. And just before Clem was fully set up, that does keep Raynor alive, jumping on it like that. I'm not sure if it's still necessarily going to be enough. We will have to lift up here as Clem, and it will buy Raynor time. But, uh, wow, I mean, I'm surprised he's alive because, I mean, he's kind of meant to be dead with the damage he's already taken in this game. Just going to be seeing the Marines pulling back, clearing up the last little bit of creep spread over here. I mentioned that creep in the center of the map might be something you want to make sure gets uh, denied. And he does do just that as we got our Bioforce back over to the far right-hand side. More Lings over to the left. They are going to be running through and looks like they're going to try and maybe make their way in for some counterattacks. That's the fourth base of Clem coming online. Uh, as we do see, Banshee here just to help out a little bit, but all the reinforcements obviously in good positions to help out too. On far right, the attacks are continuing from Clem, so back in over here. Well, at least this Banelin speed finally finished up. Well, that's going to be a major aid in this game. Widowmine gets a good connection on the third, and the Marines are there to pick up a few of the extra Zerglings toward the tail end of it as well, so fantastically done as Clem continues to move himself around here. He is going to be looking pretty comfortable across the board, I think. I mean, he's going to get a cancel on this base on the bottom side. A couple of Marines stemming into an Overlord. The few Widow Mines are going to continue to burrow up as well. These Marines continue to pull back, and a couple of Mines getting hit. Another Widow Mine shot off on some Ovis. Things continuing through, and kaboom! Widow Mines do connect. Clearing up a whole bunch right there is just going to be seeing the extra few with Banelings looking to make their way forward as well. 
bottom side of the map we move the couple of spores getting set up into position and just gonna see the marines then relocating back down to the south saying actually we kind of prefer being over here let's try and maybe grab this uh, overlord or so I mean, he's still pushing in two places. Clem's still on the upper right-hand side of this as well. So, I mean, he's still making moves around on both sides of the map and keeping the trades going up a heavy amount of supply. Reno is trying to drag himself into Hydras and the Hives. So, if he can get there, then brilliant. He is about to even up the upgrades with his own 2-2 finishing, but Clem's 3-3 is still very well underway. So, there's going to be another upgrade deficit Reno has to play against in the foreseeable future. Clem immediately realizes these Marines are being rolled in at. He target fires a few Banes and lifts them up. It's never just like, oh, I'm going to lift these, med uh, you know, Marines up and get them out of here. It's always, oh, I'm just going to casually target down three or four of the Balings running at me and uh, then lift up my Marines. And that's the extra that Clem puts into this matchup that oftentimes really does just make the difference, the confidence in those fights. This time he's a little bit slow to get there. Those last couple of Banelings did not quite manage to clean up, though, but he's got to focus on that fight down there. Reynolds just trying to fight multiple places at the same time to try and force mistakes out of Clem. That's the only way you're really going to do much at all right now. Clem's attack over here is going to get uh, cleaned up. But this Widowmine is going to come back online. And new Widowmine showing up as well. I mean, Queen's drones and all sorts blowing up. 19 workers dead. Queen's taking hits. On the left-hand side, we will see Clem still pressuring in on this side. And just not letting up this position at all. Looking up into the Medivacs again. Couple of Widowmine shots going off toward the Zerglings. And still seeing even more units coming to the upper right-hand corner. That Banshee gets shot down. Queen is able to kill it off. And we will have the well, Widow Mines, the entire rest of the Bio Army coming through to the right. And this hatchery will be probably taken down. No fifth base for you. Meanwhile, Clam has, you know, two more CCs finishing. One already floating into position. Reyna was not seen in the middle of the map in, what, three, four, five minutes at this stage? He has just been under constant attack, and I mean, he's so close to losing out on this hatchery as well, which is pretty much a, a GG moment if you lose one of your mining bases at this point. Because it's not just mining, you're losing out on production and lava. And on the left side, Widow Mines are connecting to make up for what was actually a cleanup on the Marines. Clamp's gonna lift up. Clamp's almost playing this hard mode. He's like, hmm, can I finish this game with the units I already sent across the map? He's like, oh no, I failed. I will have to actually use my reinforcements. Fortunately enough, I haven't reinforced in a while, so I have a whole new army to bring across the map and to probably win the game with. So, Clem looking pretty comfortable right now, given that situation. However, lurkers are up. I mean, Reynold has been able to fight his way into them. He's been trailing all this time, but holding on, getting to lurkers, is there some possibility? Is there a chance? I mean, first ghost from Clem are out, but that's a, that's a lot of lurkers. I mean, three ghosts might not be enough to really work through that. He will see these lurkers. Does he believe he can just attack into them? Seemingly so. He's going to stim for it. I mean, these lurkers don't have the seismic spines. Clem just spreads out and says, yep, without a buffer in front, you're not going to do very well. He backs it up when some lings arrive, but by then he'd already killed off the base, which was one of the main targets. And no seismic spines as well really makes a difference there because it means the lurkers aren't fighting as quickly as they usually would to range. It goes a long way in a fight like this. If they can start hitting those bio units even sooner before they start taking damage, it really does help a lot. So we're going to scan again, and Tank is going to try and siege in position. The Lurkers are going to be forced back. These couple of spores will go down, and there's an Overlord farm just sitting overhead here. And you can pick your way through as well, so Clem will go for that and try and shut it down a little bit further. A link counterattack moving across Marines and a Ghost. Quickly in position to deal with that, though, so not much going to come of it. And just going to be seeing our Veilings continue to run on through. Marines loading back into the medevacs, and they are going to go drop into the bottom side. Into the main base they head is on the far right-hand side. Our bio army going to go in after this hatchery. Widowmine's burrowing up all over the place, and I mean, it kind of just thought at some point Clem was going to walk over Reno, and it finally happened. Credit to Reno for dragging the game out as much as possible, but in the bottom left-hand corner of Hardwire, up 1-0 to zero in the best of five. Let's see if he can take this to a 2-0 lead. It is Team Liquid's Clem. Top right hand corner, our blue Zerg player from Clash. This is Reno. Map number two, and obviously his map pick. It does feel like it's so important to win your first map pick in a best of five TVZ nowadays. Because, you know, if you if you lose your own map pick, and obviously 
your opponent kind of wins theirs. That means that you're down 0-2, especially when you are picking, uh, you know, especially when you are picking your your map second, like Reno is here, because now if he loses his map pick, he's down a game and has to play on Clem's map game three and win that. It's just a lot of pressure being down 0-2 and everything, so it really feels like if you want to have a good chance in the TV, and obviously this is probably like a very common sense sort of statement, to have a good chance in a matchup, it's always good if you start 1-1. Even better if you go 2-0, right, guys? I feel like in this map pool more than ever, it's important to get to 1-1 initially and then go from there. A lot of the fighting in these best of fives really happens on the later maps because those are the maps that are a little bit less kind of like, okay, straight up, this is the map I should be winning on, for example. And that's always been the case. Like I said, I just think this map pool kind of uh, has a little bit more of that factor in the TVZ than the last one. We're we'll heading to the bottom left side. Just off on a bit of a scout. A couple of queens and zerglings coming up from Raynor's side of things. So bring those into play. And the Reaper of Clem is going to go to scout to the top. So run, Reaper, run. Go get some information here, Ellie. Getting all the way to the top of the map. And just going to be having our zergling speed coming up. A few extra drones coming into play. Keep it coming through. Grenade goes down. Lings are going to get past that, and we do see the Lings looking to try and jump onto the Reaper. So Reaper taking a few shots there. A little bit of back and forth. It goes down. Queen taking some shots. Queen just going to push the Reaper back out to the bottom side. will come up on the barracks factory ready to swap onto that and the barracks will move over to the left and build a tech lab starport is on the way in as well so just gonna be seeing a very different opening from clan by playing a two gas opening he puts himself into a much more aggressive stance from the very start of the game definitely will be uh, impactful i'd imagine let's see what he can do with this be kind of surprised to see Banshees again. But then again, off uh, two gas like this, what are your other options? Something of a faster help at attack? I think Banshees probably are just the go to, and he could play a Raven. Clem sometimes does this. Just start a Banshee, so it's not going to be a Raven. He does sometimes play like a Raven. He usually likes that build mostly on 2000 atmospheres, though, so not so much like a hardwire kind of map. He does the Raven 10 Hellion build a lot on 2000 atmospheres. I wonder why that map. Maybe just feels like that's the right amount of space and the right amount of opportunity for the Raven later in the game, perhaps. That's a good question. Next time he does it on 2K Atmospheres and we get him for an interview, I'm going to ask him. Yeah, Reynolds not uh, got any holes in his defense here. Clem is looking, right? And it looks tantalizing. You see the gap and you're like, oh, a queen here, queen there. I can dive through there, but the Lings are back here. There's potential for Lings to be on the high ground. You gotta be really careful in these situations, right? You know, you just gotta be so cautious. Because if you're not careful, you will very quickly run into trouble. If you're just like, oh yeah, I got this, right? I, I don't believe my opponent can defend Hellions running in. And even right now, the Clem is kind of seeing the chance because he got past the Queens for free. The Lings get a good surround to stop the Hellions really doing too much. Now, four of them do get up into the main. That's a very important uh, evolution chamber to try and slow these Hellions down. As the drones, oh, the Hellions are so low, is they're going to get some of their final shots off here? It's just taking forever to finally clean them up. They're lined up, the drones! 11 go down in the end. It felt like Reno had such a good surround on the low ground. To then lose the Lings, lose the surround, and the Hellions get up. And now there's Hellions on the third base. There's Banshee, sorry, on the third base as well. And the Spore wasn't ready over here. Oh, dear. Because now these couple of drones are in trouble too. He is going to Spore Crawler trick one of them. He's going to transfuse the next. I mean, credit to Rain or good drone defense, but maybe a little bit too late. 14 dead workers and once more. The other game is going to be going in favor of a liquid clam. As he puts himself in a great spot. Hardwire, longer, larger map. Possible that you may, you know make your way back into this here as Raynor. And, uh, you know, this isn't going to be game ending, but it definitely gives Clem... Well, a lot of the momentum that he'll be looking for for his typical early and mid-game playstyle, which is start attacking 
and then never stop attacking. I know, taking a fourth base now as well. I mean, that's a very late fourth hatchery too at six minutes. And that, that's another issue, right? Is that that fourth base being later means he is going to have a later, you know, set of, um... He's going to have a later set of injects. And with a later set of injects, he's going to fall into even more trouble. So, definitely quite a few issues here as the game progresses. And it's just all a kind of knock-on effect of having to deal with that initial hurry and run by. And just to try and find their way into the main. They will cloak. There's no overseer nearby, so they'll just try and find drones on the edge of the... Spore crawler radius, our first two medivacs of marines will be moving across the map, and now we start to get rid of a few of these drones. Again, just Banshee's finding the corners, finding the edges where they can just slip in, do a bit of damage, and, and start to slip out. He will just fly straight up the top there, and I mean, what is over here to defend this right now? There are 32 lings on the map. Well, here's a bunch of them, and they will force the lift up, so they will stop Clem from attacking for the moment. Meanwhile, the Banshees are continuing to have a wonderful time. Seven drones killed. And the Marines do have an Overlord in the top left. They can pick off as well. Reno not going to be supply blocked or anything crazy, but I mean, he's not exactly doing great. 105 out of 112. One Ovi on the way. His upgrades just started. And with all of these drones he's now lost in the game, we're talking about 21 dead workers. Resources lost in Clem's favor. He will lose a medevac here, though, Clem. Those queens on the high ground will be able to push him back. And that's a few Marines going down, so this drop... Being handled, and that's going to increase Reynor's chances. It gives him a, a shot at just slowing Clem down. If you're going to win this game, you need to slow Clem down a lot. He needs to do a lot of what he did on Berling Grab, which is survive, survive, survive. Hope the size of the map comes to your aid a little bit in that and just makes it a little bit easier to hold on between attacks. Gives you a little bit more buffer time to set yourself up and be prepared. And then just kind of playing around that idea, so... You see Marines and Lord now down to the bottom right-hand side. They are going to go pressing forward. They're going to find an Overlord. Lord is going to go down. So that's a supply block now for Raynor. That's going to hurt as we do see another Overlord going to go down here as well, potentially. Now oh, he's in a pretty deep supply block. Seven Overlords actually building. As Clan loses a few of these Marines. Run by will not do much. Tank-friendly fire might be the biggest killer of uh, SCVs there rather than the Zerglings. Back around the top and seeing what they can do. Well, this lone banshee just sat here and dealing damage, waiting for an overseer to show up to push it back, and it's again just so frustrating to see this. Continue to happen, right? I mean, it is just annoying at this stage. Let's see, six, uh... Six dead drones. I mean, again, the numbers just keep on adding up. That's going to be, what, 28 workers dead in the game. Marines are right here to maybe get this hatchery. They stim for it, force a cancel. Just a little bit of money wasted once again, of course. Something else you didn't really want to have to deal with here, but alas, here we are without really much choice about it. A lot of Marines going to rub the left-hand side as Widow Mines are going to get burrowing. Right, this group of Marines will hold out and see what they can do as well. More Marines still pressing forward. Ling Bane coming through. A couple of Widow Mine shots. Can they go off towards the Marines initially? I mean, this is one of those uh, big attacks here from Clem, which has the potential to go really kind of game ending if he can just keep this position long enough and really work his way to you know basically a spot where he's able to deny this forward base i mean that would be really frustrating if he can get that done that would be absolutely huge for him let's see if he'll be able to here over this next little while Bing bang gonna start running through a couple widow mines on burrow about him burrows all the widow mines here so pretty much none of them go off even that last one was just out of reach from being able to connect there so that's a little bit frustrating you see the link bane still coming through that widow mine connects a bit better rain or dodges the next one there's still a few more this last one on the right side connects as well but just for one bane link clam gonna lift up unload still has two two against one one at the moment will probably be wanting to press that a little further if at all possible we'll see if he can do so here in the near future, again, just trying to clean out some more of these Widow Mines as they sit around and 
try to just be as frustrating as they can be. Things, beans. Start to chase down the central army. Bam. Even gonna stop the burrow up the widow mine there. Doesn't go off. The bailing helping to blow it up just about in time. Important to get rid of that because that could have gone very wrong very quickly. We are going to work our way through this topside hatchery. Queen Transfusion's trying to save it, but these Marines are just too powerful. The Transfusion survived. Oh, I kept that alive for so long. It looked like it might have lived, but it just doesn't happen. Oh my goodness. And that's going to be the hatchery going down. What a painful experience for Raynor. Absolutely not what you want to be having happen. It's just going to be seen. I mean, look, Dan is finishing. He is going to be on to Lurkers, and that is the big news, right, is that you've made it to Lurkers. Congratulations, Raynor. Maybe you've got yourself a chance right now. Like, maybe you have got yourself something of an opportunity. Maybe you can just about make this work some way, somehow, from here. And if that goes down that left-hand side, as you do see, the Wildermine just hits an Overseer, so nothing too major off the back of that. I mean, still moving through, trying to hit that uh, hatch, trying to take it down. It's a little bit more damage being done, and just going to be seeing a couple of water mines here. Oh, I'm going to be blowing up as well. Nicely handled. I mean, Clem. Still up a lot of supply. What he wants to do is just keep the pressure on. The more he keeps the pressure on here, the better. He probably believes this ends up for himself. So, just trying to keep that happening. I mean, the more he trades, the better it is. Oh, that would mine hit dead center on his Marines. He needs to make sure this next would mine doesn't do the same. And that's why he unburrows, reburrows. Even though these, the units are basically on top of him, he just wants to avoid friendly fire. Clem's biggest threat to himself right now seems to be his own units. But, Lurkers are coming out. We're on four, moving to six. Clem's going to see one Lurker here and kind of stim at it. Raynor didn't have a lot of other units in position, but they're getting here now. We do snipe that first Lurker as we have to lift up. Good thing we did because the Widowmine shot was dead center on the Marines that time around. Clem's still leading this game. 40 supply up at the moment. Medivac's loading up more. And on the right-hand side, we're going to snipe down or attempt to snipe down another Lurker. We do stim forward and a couple of those Lurkers will drop. So the Lurker's being picked off here. Nice for Clem. I mean, anything you can do to stop the Lurker count rising too high is obviously pretty big. You can see Reno is strapped for cash. 80 gas in the bank, a handful of minerals, but uh, it's definitely tough. We're going to snipe this Lurker down. It's going to die pretty quick. The Lurkers are on the, the back of this base looking to really try and catch the units maybe harassing from the low ground. So, aim for that. I mean, now extra Ghost showing up over here, but maybe the Ling Bane can find a way to get on top of this. Maybe they can make a difference as we do see still pressing forward here. This Bioforce Widowmind support. Coming in for it as well. Another few snipes lining up across the board. A bunch of these queens going down. Uh, these ghosts, I was going to say, are in some trouble on that top side. A couple of them get left behind. Maybe they can soak some banelings up effectively. And a couple of lurkers that make their way forward will make this a reasonable trade. When you look at the army graphs, uh, they both drop a lot. I was trying to think if maybe Clem had dropped just a little bit more. I feel like Clem is obviously able to just start rebuilding a lot sooner because he was max, so he's got a bit more of a bank. That's going to affect the army value graph there as well, right? Like, he stops and starts, you know, going back up much quicker. Raynor halts and continues to kind of stay still. I guess Clem's also continuing to get some extra pickoffs here. That uh, lone lurker does get targeted down. Raynor is only going to have a couple of banelings left in this army. And Clem continues to just fight this position, believing he can continue to push on through. He is going to get rid of one of those lurkers again. He's going to have that one lurker topside if he can snipe that. It's providing a lot of damage in this uh, fight to Raynor at the moment, but he does snipe it now. Clem's removed it from the equation, and that should make this a lot more playable as Widowmind's continuing to kind of do what they can at the front and just slowing Raynor from just running straight into this. You can see the supply guys is going further and further in Clem's favor. As this trade happens, as long as these ghosts don't all die to the same group of banelings, this should be okay. We're sniping individual Hydras off, which is always a bonus, and that is going to be Clem taking a 2-0 lead. Again, early damage done, putting himself into a great position and leveraging that momentum into a victory, and hence a 2-0 lead in the series. In the bottom right-hand corner, our red Terran player from Team Liquid is going to be Clem. 2-0 up, one map to win it all today. Takes on the Blue Zerg from Clash, Raynor. Map three of this best of five series.
Barrack starting from Clem. Out on the top of his ramp and wonder if Reynolds gonna try anything roach focused in this uh in this potentially final map if he messes up and doesn't get enough done. This was the map he lost to Hero Marine earlier playing the well, first of all, this is a hatchery first, not a pool first, which he played early against uh, Hero Marine, but he played fool first into a roach attack that just didn't really do enough and then led into a game which was just very uninspiring altogether. Obviously just got attacked, he had a bunch of roaches that just got melted by the bioforce. Sorax will be finishing up the spawning pool on its way, and our early game on the way up. Steal a camera for the moments here of the early game as we get ourselves into the action. See if he goes escaping out up to the top side of the map, so it's going to go running out of way over there. Just going to be seeing that pool coming up as well. The Overlord's still out down the bottom right also. We'll see. Information and scouting going to be important here from Raynor. He wants to make sure this Overlord on the bottom side goes somewhere where he can maybe dive into the main and just figure out exactly what Clem is doing early. Not want to be caught off by anything on this map because it's just so short. If you're relying on a scout as units are moving out or halfway across the map, they're basically in your base already. So having the Overlord set to fly into the main and try and pick up information, important on this map more so than others. Uh, for sure, so I would not be surprised to see him sacrifice that overlord a bit further in the game. Just from that top left side into the main. As right now, this trooper doesn't even bother with going for the drones. He knows the drones are going to micro into evos or spores, right, if needed. So he was just going for the lingers instead. And he does get one zergling here in the end. So one ling will go down as we'll drop a grenade just to punch the queen back as well. Why not? Command center building and finishing on the natural will give Clem his... Second orbital of the game, and by the way, double gas, no 3cc, so once again, Clem going to stay aggressive here. Probably, I would imagine, this map, you really do just go into Banshees again, unless he goes into something of a Hellbat attack. He did that against Ragnarok in the um, World Team League, and he starts a Marine, which kind of looks like it is a, a Hellbat attack if you're building a Marine. He cancels that Marine, that suggests he might build a Tech Lab instead, that's then more likely going to be Banshees. In the, in the World Team League against Ragnarok, the final map, he uh, he played some weird-ass Hellbat attack on this map, and it just didn't work. And it was like, well, with your tournament life on the line, everything comes down to this. He just committed so much to one attack, and it was like, it was such a weird decision. Anyway, a couple of things getting bopped around. The Reaper and the two Hellions going to come up this side, and they will roast a couple of Zerglings. We hop up into the natural, and these drones will be in some trouble, so... Everyone's going to start taking some shots. A couple of them going down already. Three workers dead. Okay, this is pretty good for just two Hellions. This Reaper is helping out a lot. It's putting a lot of the drones into like one or two hit territory instead of three hits. And that's actually really nice. So six drones going down for two Hellions in the Reaper. Good little bit of early damage from Clem, who in the end just went for the Viking. And now a Liberator. And then I guess he's going to go Stim, 3cc on the low ground. And yeah, just, just go into a nice normal setup. Just not off of one gas three command center so a little bit of a later three cc setup and just kind of working from there as the hellions wanting to poke into the third base but will not really find too much the command center building on the front of the natural and those hellions down out the front they're going to put a bit of damage onto those couple of queens doing very well with that Extra couple of barracks building up after the 3cc starts, so we will go 3cc, then our extra barracks. And just seeing Reno going there, then Baneling Nest, which is not the wrong decision. He's not under any immediate pressure, so he didn't need to rush out this Baneling Nest any earlier than he has done. So just a good read on the game from him. As these Hellions come across the other side and they'll be poking at the front, the Queen's turn those around pretty much immediately. Hellions wrapping back around the top side and now aiming for... Mineral line there. And all these extra racks finishing. 1 1 upgrades will start from Clem as well, so just making his way into that as the Hellions do get a creep tumor as they hit those queens. A little bit of a combo attack. Our Viking is just in after an overlord and 
Yeah, really wanted it as well. Oh, oh the final shot as it died. Nearly had it as well. And Viking had one dying wish, but it was not granted. The Bray will get a queen, though, as we lose a Hellion over on this side. Just a lot of little fights happening around the map. The Bray has to move away because the Spore was about to finish, and it did so in pretty much perfect timing. Obviously just wanted to deny as much mining time on that base as possible. The more mining time you deny, the better this typically turns into for you. And you can see the moments in this game where Clem is taking that equal lead the first time. That major advantage is when those two Hellions and the Reaper ran in, and the second time that Liberator forcing the entire third mineral line to back up from mining for a little while. Well, the upgrades are just now starting from Raynor. Baneling's speed's about halfway done. You see these few lanes running forward, and just a couple of SCVs going to pull out of here. Well, a few Marines are moving back across, and that's going to be three SCVs going down, and yeah, just going to be seeing our Marines and the Liberator continuing out to the top side, so they are going to push up to this watchtower. Take that, and then figure out moving forward from there as we do get rid of a couple of Zerglings. Just going to get our Liberator sieging. And Hellions, Marines, pressing forward right now. Going to get rid of a good amount of creep at the moment. And, well, a couple of Queens thinking about taking a turn back onto the Marines. Marines are going to get rid of one of these Queens and we'll actually continue for another one. Transfusions have to be popped, but it wasn't enough. Now he's trying to target fire the Banelings down. Gets another couple right now. Clem is trading well. The Zerglings need to get back here. Because the Lings weren't here, he was able to just keep going in and out against the Queens and the Banes without the Lings and their speeds. He couldn't really stop it from happening, Raynor, so... Good fights from Clem, who's denying this fourth base from mining a little bit. That Spore only just now starting to build there. So that fourth not able to mine properly again. Clem is target firing Banelins as he's out across that right-hand side. 2-2 two, two upgrades already stunned. The 1-1 one, one from Raynor is lagging behind us. Oh no, a Queen goes down against the Liberator, so... I mean, Rain was just lost a lot of units this game, right? Just, again, a queen here and a queen there. It's all these little things that do just add up over the course of a game. Look at the resources lost. 2.5k to 1.5k. 1,000 difference, 8 minutes in. And again, when you look at the income graph, it's not like Rain has been taking that typical Zerg income lead. Clem has been, you know, turning a lot of this into... Yeah, he's been turning a lot of this into just other kind of advantages, right? He's just been, you know... Not just resources lost, but mining time lost is basically what I'm trying to say. Mining time lost is a real resource lost as well, and kind of intrigued that Clem didn't target fire banelings there. That felt like the prime time. There was only three or four of them. Man, it's something which, when you talk about most times, like, oh, that was fine. He lift up against this little attack. When it's Clem, you're like, oh, why why isn't he target firing the baneling? Is he feeling okay? Is Clem, is Clem slumping? Uh, well, sometimes he's just human. Marines actually come around the right side, and well, we're going to be seeing drops kind of lifting up left, right. Not quite center, but left and right side. Again, this multi prone aggression, something Clem has been very good at throughout the series. Reno again playing from behind in the early stages of the mid game here, and well, his tanks and Widow Mines working in tandem to help take down the Lings. The tank kind of forced the Lings to clump up a little bit more, which allowed the Widow Mine shot to get a little bit extra kind of damage done, really. And take down a Baneling there. I'm just going to see these Lings still continuing across the Banes, rolling in with everything else, too. I'm going to stem up this left hand side and just going to be seeing even more of this creep spread being denied. Some more and more creep going down. We get our way all the way up to the top. And these few Banelings are going to come rolling through. Wouldn't mind shot there was very good. So able to clean up that and just going to be seeing the rest of these Marines turning back around. Lings are still coming across and. Okay. On the top right, we do see these Marines pulling back as well. Another oh no, the Widow Mines hurt the Marines more than anything else. Okay, momentum changer perhaps. That depowers this upper right attack. And once again, it's kind of what's happening in one of the previous games. Was it Belengrad, where Clem's worst enemy was was mostly his own Widow Mines? That's kind of happening here as well. A couple borrowed Bailings might be the difference at some stage as well. I mean, the good news is not a lot died there, just a lot got damaged. So now you recover, you get going again. Again, Reynolds doing a great job of just making sure these Lings are running in toward those Marines, trailing Widow Mine shots forward. Clem, confident to stand there and just stim and just fight as the Bailing rolls towards him. 
And now he's target firing. Now there is a widow mine which he unburrows and re oh yes, unburrows and just make sure it doesn't friendly fire at all. Overseer's going down. Extra Bane's just finished. Clem has enough. Where I actually think he maybe could have stood and fought there. There's only a couple of Bane's left, but he's going to do the safer thing and back away. Maybe he has to fall back to Mike Macro as well. I mean, Reynolds also supply blocked. He's in trouble, guys. He's got Hydras coming up. Lurker then about to be done, but he is going to still need those Lurker upgrades to really be effective here and. Obviously, Clem is starting up Blips and, you know, Ghost Academy. He's going into all of the right things to set himself up here as well. The, uh, the Cyclone might be a bit of a mistake. I don't think that's intentional. Clem up 40 supply. And I feel like every single one of these games has been a similar story. Clem takes the early lead. He gets damage done early. And Reino, when he doesn't kind of have that perfect early game, just can't keep up. Into the mid game with Clem. And from there, Clem just plays beautiful StarCraft. Micros is hard out. You know, trades disgustingly on every side of the map and, yeah, just is able to really just take advantage of the momentum he creates for himself. It initially, he just can't quite get the damage out, but he needs to fight the Lings to take down that hatchery. But he will get the left side hatch. And, well, there are indeed some lurkers finishing up over here. And he wasn't able to cancel those. They will get a burrow on the low ground. Clem didn't see them, so he actually didn't realize. And he stims into them. As he's back to killing this hatchery on the top, he will get that. And now Reynos on three bases. Money issues... Production issues, lava issues, I mean, you name it. Reynolds probably got it. 3-3 on the way from Clem, halfway done. No further upgrades from Reynolds, who's just about managing to tech up in the game. It really does look as though we are going to have ourselves a solution to this game, number three, guys, and to this series. Bio Force continues to push to the top. Liberator Seer Jane, oh, Falling's taking some hits there. The Lurk is coming through, and... Crips Red taking damage, just going to be seeing the few Banelings crashing in. Okay, mistake from Clem. Widow Mine's not burrowing. Big mistake from Clem is going to give Reno at least a chance, right? It's a group of units. It's 10, 15 supply. That just isn't going to be part of the game now, so helping Reno out a little bit. Reno getting a help in hand when he somewhat needs it the most right now. He really does freaking need it, guys. He is in, you know, a desperate times, desperate measures sort of situation at this point. Widow Mine is going to grab the look of there and just going to be seeing the Liberator is sieging up. Man, there are mines everywhere, by the way. It's kind of ridiculous how many mines there are around the map. Clem, of course, still has the supply lead, and, you know, a big part of him slowing down a little bit right now was just the fact that he was moving into Ghost, and as Ghost come online, he's obviously going to be feeling a lot better about being able to fight these lurkers. These few pains actually doing pretty well initially. A lot of the Ghosts in the front lines there getting caught and taken down, so becoming a little bit costly. Gonna have 22 drones dead in recent times, though, and again, just not pretty when you think about the position you're in right now as Reynor. It's not what you want to be in at all. It's just going to be seeing the Queen pushing the Liberator back around the top. Lurkers are still producing. Lings are still on the way out. A Hydra going to be finishing up shortly. I mean, you're getting some extra units out, but the supply difference just keeps on growing. 60, 70 supply differences in this game. And Clem is more or less double the army supply. Not quite, but uh, he's also 16 workers ahead, so I think we can forgive him. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you push on the left-hand side. You really do need the Terran supply to work against him here, so Raynor needs these Widow Mines to friendly fire. I don't even know if Clem burrowed them up there. I don't know what he lifted. He lifted the ghost, so it wasn't the uh, Widow Mines. GG is called. We saw this one coming from a mile away, and that is going to be... Clem 3-0 over Reno in the finals. GG's. Well played. Just very, very solid TVZ right here.